Why is understanding the code of civil procedure quintessential for anyone diving into the field of law? This isn't just a rhetorical question. The Code of Civil Procedure, or CPC as it's commonly known, is a fundamental pillar of the legal world. It sets forth the procedural rules and regulations that courts follow in civil lawsuits. It's like the playbook for civil disputes, guiding the way from the start of a case to its completion. The CPC ensures fair and equal treatment to all parties involved. It sets standards for legal proceedings, making sure everyone knows the rules of the game. This involves everything from filing a case, serving summons, to the final judgment. It's not just about the lawyers and the judges, it's about the litigants too. It protects their rights, ensuring they have a fair chance to present their case. One of the key components of the CPC is Order 5, which deals with the issue and service of summons. Order 5 of the CPC is a crucial piece of legislation that governs the issuance and service of summons. This order, nestled within the Code of Civil Procedure, plays an integral role in maintaining the fluidity of legal proceedings. It is a guiding light ensuring proper communication between the court and the parties involved. Order 5 is like a well-oiled machine, diligently working in the background, setting the wheels of justice in motion. It is a beacon, illuminating the path for defendants guiding them on when and how to appear before the court and what to expect in the process. It's a testament to the importance of clear, timely and accurate communication in the realm of law. It echoes the very foundations of justice, ensuring that no individual is left in the dark and every voice has the chance to be heard. Let's delve into the specific rules of Order 5, starting with Rule 1. Rule 1 and Rule 2 of Order 5 set the stage for the issuance of a summons. Let's delve deeper into these foundational rules. Rule 1 is all about the initiation of the suit. Once a suit has been properly instituted, a summons can be issued to the defendant. The defendant is thus called upon to appear, answer the claim, and to file their written defence if they have one. This defence must be filed within 30 days from the date the summons was served on the defendant. This rule is instrumental in ensuring that the defendant is informed about the suit and is given an opportunity to present their side of the story. Now to illustrate this, let's consider a hypothetical scenario. Imagine you're a shop owner and a customer has filed a suit against you for a faulty product. Once the suit is duly instituted, you'll receive a summons notifying you of the suit. You'll then have 30 days to appear, respond to the claim and file your written defence if you choose to do so. Moving on to Rule 2, it stipulates that every summons must be accompanied by a copy of the plaint. The plaint is the written complaint or allegation by the plaintiff. By providing a copy of the plaint along with the summons, the defendant is given a clear understanding of the charges or claims made against them. This ensures transparency and allows the defendant to prepare an appropriate defence. To understand this better, let's revisit our hypothetical scenario. Along with the summons, you, the shop owner, will receive a copy of the plaint. This will detail the customer's complaint about the faulty product. With this information, you can understand the exact nature of the claim and prepare your defence accordingly. With a clear understanding of Rule 1 and Rule 2, we proceed to Rule 3 and 4. Rule 3 and Rule 4 of Order 5 provide guidelines on the personal appearance of the defendant. Moving on to Rule 3, it gives the court an obligation to require the personal appearance of the defendant. The summons will then order the defendant to appear in person in court on a specified day. This rule aims to ensure that the defendant is properly informed and in turn prepared to present their defence. To help you understand this better, let's imagine a scenario. Suppose Mr Smith is being sued by Mr Johnson over a property dispute. Once the suit is duly instituted, a summons will be issued to Mr Smith, ordering him to personally appear in court on a particular day. This is how Rule 3 operates. Shifting gears to Rule 4, it lays down conditions for the personal appearance of the defendant. It states that no party shall be ordered to appear in person unless they reside within the local limits of the court's ordinary, original jurisdiction. In simple terms, if you live within the court's jurisdiction, or at a place less than 50 or less than 200 miles distance from the courthouse, only then can you be ordered to appear in person. To illustrate, let's consider this. If Mr. Smith resides in the same city where the court is located, he can be ordered to appear in person. 
However, if he lives more than 200 miles away, the court cannot mandate his personal appearance. This rule ensures a fair process by considering the geographical constraints of all parties involved. In sum, Rule 3 and Rule 4 of Order 5 are all about the personal appearance of the defendant. These rules ensure that the defendant is not only well informed about the proceedings, but also given a fair chance to present their defence. They also take into consideration the practicality of the defendant's appearance based on their geographical location. Next, we explore the final rule of Order 5, Rule 5. Rule 5 of Order 5 determines the purpose of the summons. This rule is pivotal in the proceedings of a suit as it establishes the direction the case will take. Let's delve deeper into this rule. It states that the court, at the time of issuing the summons, shall decide whether the summons is for the settlement of issues only or for the final disposal of the suit. This decision is then recorded in the summons as a direction. Think of it like this. Picture a fork in the road. The court, acting as a guide, decides which path the case will take, one leading to the settlement of issues or another culminating in the final disposal of the suit. This decision is then communicated to the parties involved through the summons. Let's take an example to illustrate this further. Consider a suit involving a property dispute. If the court determines that there are numerous issues that need to be resolved before the case can proceed to trial, the summons would be issued for the settlement of these issues. This could involve discussions around the validity of documents, the identification of the rightful owner, and so on. On the other hand, if the court finds that the case is straightforward with no significant issues to be settled, the summons may be issued for the final disposal of the suit. This means that the court is ready to hear the arguments, examine the evidence, and render a decision. This rule, therefore, provides the court with the discretion to manage the proceedings effectively, keeping in mind the complexities of the case and the interests of the parties involved. It is instrumental in ensuring that the process is streamlined, efficient and fair. Remember, the court's decision at this stage sets the tone for the proceedings that follow. It becomes a roadmap guiding the journey of the case from the initial stage to its culmination. Now that we've covered all the rules of Order 5, let's summarise the key points. Order 5 of the CPC plays a pivotal role in the legal proceedings of a suit. It lays down the guidelines for the issue and service of summons, creating a framework that ensures the fair administration of justice. To recap, Rule 1 of Order 5 states that once a suit has been properly instituted, a summons can be issued to the defendant, instructing them to appear in court and present their defence within 30 days from the date of service of summons. This rule is crucial because it ensures the defendant is given ample opportunity to prepare and present their side of the story. Rule 2 further enhances transparency in the legal proceedings by requiring every summons to be accompanied by a copy of the plaint. This enables the defendant to fully understand the nature of the claim made against them. Rule 3 provides the court with the authority to require the personal appearance of the defendant. The summons will dictate this requirement, specifying the day the defendant must appear in person. This rule serves to ensure that the defendant is physically present to answer the claim, fostering a sense of accountability. Rule 4, however, provides a safeguard against unnecessary inconvenience to the defendant. It states that a party shall not be ordered to appear in person unless they reside within a certain distance from the courthouse. This rule ensures that the legal proceedings do not impose an undue burden on the defendant. Finally, Rule 5 directs the court to determine, at the time of issuing the summons, whether it will be for the settlement of issues only or for the final disposal of the suit. This rule ensures that the defendant is clearly aware of what is expected of them when they appear in court. In sum, Order 5 of the CPC is a comprehensive framework that balances the need for efficiency in legal proceedings with the rights of the defendant. It provides clarity, transparency and fairness, ensuring that the wheels of justice turn smoothly. With a comprehensive understanding of Order 5, you are better equipped to navigate the ins and outs of the Code of Civil Procedure.